Today on Exploring Scotland's History, we are going to have a wee look at Hales Castle. The origins of Hales Castle were built way back in the 1240s. This would have been the most original part of the castle that the Gurleys had built. Obviously, it has been changed an awful amount over the years with this new ducat, and there's an old ducat over the other side. underneath the Great Hall and in the Bakehouse and this is where not only bread would have been produced but due to yeast they produced ale. Even the children drank ale because it was really much more sensible than drinking the water which could be pretty dodgy at times. This would have formed the original fortified mansion of Hugh de Gurley. De Gurley is an English name Edmund Howe's History of England actually lists his father. He is also listed as accompanying William the Lion from England to this particular area. This would have been around 1174. And at this stage, de Gurley owned lands both here and up in Fife. His grandson, William de Gurley de Bagley. Well, he was mentioned on the Ragman Roll as a baron swearing allegiance to Edward the first of England in 1296. The de Gurleys supported the English in the wars of independence. They were on the losing side, so they had to forfeit their lands. And the lands were removed just after the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314. Robert the Bruce quickly granted the lands to Sir Adam de Hepburn and the castle changed drastically. The Hepburns did a great amount of expansion in the 1300s and 1400s, including this really impressive curtain wall. Not only did it look spectacular, and even more so in its heyday, I would imagine, but it was also making it one of the best defended castles and small castles in this area. The planned defences were not in vain. Hales Castle got its fair share of skirmishes. In 1401, just two years before his own death, not only did he attack it once, but twice. Henry Hotspur Percy, leading his English forces. He failed both times, thankfully. Mr Hotspur is probably worth mentioning, as for those of you who do read a lot of Scottish history, you'll find he crops up quite a lot. He was given a knighthood at the tender age of 12 years. By the age of 14, he was fighting at the Siege of Berwick. What followed was a military career in France and Prussia, with various forays up into Scotland in between, including the two attacks here. Hotspur's cockiness eventually became his downfall. In 1403, he took up arms against his own king at that stage, Henry IV and he was shot dead by an arrow to the head. He was then buried, disinterred, quartered, and hung on a spear between two millstones in Shrewsbury. What a popular guy. In those days, that would have served as a warning for anyone else stupid enough to take on the crown that they would get what's coming to them. The castle was again attacked 
1446 by the pro-English Archibald Dunbar. It said that he killed every living soul within the walls. Again, we get rapid change. Move forward to 1547 and we have Patrick Hepburn, the third Earl of Bothwell. He opposed the Regent acting on Mary Queen of Scots behalf and was forced to surrender Hales Castle. The next year, the English captured the castle, quickly recaptured by the Scots, who removed the gate to prevent it from being further used to the English. At the beginning, when you walk in, it appears to be quite a compact little house until you come round the back here down by the river. And boy, is it an edifice. Hepburns would only hold the castle for a further 20 years. James Hepburn, the fourth Earl of Bothwell, was involved in the murder of Lord Darnley, one of Mary Queen of Scots' husbands. In April of that year, he took her to Dunbar. Now this is where the story maybe branches off a bit. There are those who will believe that he raped her and abducted her. And there are those who believe that she consummated a prearranged plan. Whatever the motive of Hepburn and Mary, they did stay here for a night on their way to Edinburgh, where things would become extremely tragic. Mary would abdicate from the throne. Bothwell was first forced to flee to Denmark where he would eventually die of insanity. And of course, like all stories like this, the lands were forfeited yet again. After the Hepburns had had the land taken off them, the castle really went into demise at this stage. Oliver Cromwell came and put the final nail in the coffin when he ordered his government troops to take lumps out of it bit by bit. You can see through here why this would have been prime real estate for any clan taking it over. Absolutely beautiful, flat, arable land. This is one of two pit prisons. The laird was responsible for handing out his own punishments and obviously people would have been landed here for disregarding the local law and order. We discussed this process in our Dalmally video, I'll put a link up to that now. George Wishart was also kept in the pit prison on his way to be burnt at the stake at St Andrews for being a heretic, apparently. This area to the east is where all these guests that any decent castle would have stayed and were entertained. The castle is peppered with little ducats that go nowhere and stunning arches over them. What are you seeing? Up here. My fellow historian today, Titch, has just spotted a very strange, what appears to be footprint, right at the top of the arch. See if anyone tells me that that was St Columba, there's going to be trouble. <laughs> I hear rumbles of thunder. <laughs> the castle, like so many, comes with a ghost story. 
it is reported that there is a white lady who roams the grounds and within the castle it's also said that she's Mary Queen of Scots now I know what you're all going to say we were at such and such a castle and Mary Queen of Scots goes there too she does appear to be quite a well-traveled ghost and I suppose if her soul wasn't that much torture perhaps it is her ghost in every place I'm leaving that down to you guys But that was Hales Castle. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and leave a comment. It helps the channel grow. There are links in the description if you would like to buy me a coffee or join me on my Facebook or Instagram, all of the same name, Exploring Scotland's History.